All right. <clears throat> but so yeah, no, that was that was great to see. Yeah, it was it was really wonderful. So anyway, big thanks to everybody who showed up for that and helped us out. Hey, look at that. The magical stream. It's back hey, to green. Green means go. Can you imagine that? Um I so think now they're, now they're hearing us at like ten times speed to catch up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to play with fire and switch the camera back on. We'll see what happens. Uh, a smaller camera view this time, okay? So you and don't break it? We'll just see what happens. Gradually okay? increase. All right. So anyway, huge, huge thank you. And then personally, I would like to give a thank you to, to everybody who really came out in droves and supported me on the whole Fleet Featherstone return that that whole thing was really amazing. Um, I I set the video to live probably an hour, I think, after that stream was over. Um, and when I woke up, eleven hours later, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had five hundred views on it, and it's been climbing ever since. Last yeah, time I checked last yeah. night, it was at sixteen hundred and climbing. That's so great. you know, I, I have pretty amazing. Shared it with several people who I don't know would normally be into our podcast or our role play. And I mm -hmm. hope that they're going to see it too, just because it's such a great story. I hope so too. And I would uh, <laughs> wholeheartedly <laughs> request that everyone find yeah. someone who might not be traditionally into this. Cause I, th it's going to be the next game of Thrones. Yeah. So th thank you all <laughs> of you cool? who, who oh, really yeah. came out to support that. Um, I'm working on the next episode right now. I'm an hour and a half into it. I think I probably got another hour to go. Maybe, may maybe more. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping to release something this weekend if if I may get lucky and be able to release something by Sunday night or something like that. So, fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, any anything else you guys want to mention, oh boy. fellas? You got any any announcements, updates, things of that sort? Uh, I do not have anything at the moment. So okay, maybe a shout out and a thank you again to our sponsors too. Oh, for sure, that would be great. So yeah, a big thank you to. Shell's Brewery here in New Ulm, Minnesota, and to Starbucks. Starbucks. Yep, thanks for a, Starbucks for a lot of coffee. Yep, a and uh, yeah, I, big... I was hearing in the middle of the you know wee hours of the night that that maybe the coffee could have had a little more caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and maybe some sharp objects embedded or something. It's some something to wake <laughs> us up. Yeah, I don't think that would be a good idea at all. No, yeah. maybe not. Um, blood bloodletting doesn't really God. help. Yeah, uh, it just makes it just makes me tired. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Starbucks and Shells, <clears throat> obviously there's something going on with the letter S. I guess must be awesome. I guess except we except, had our S covered. Yeah, we did. We had our S's covered. <laughs> totally. Oh, oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, the other thing too, I'd like to say is is thank you for those to those people who uh, really kind of put some skin in the game with us too, like. You know, Brandy, who oh, for sure. made all that food. And yeah, uh, to absolutely. my employer, who sprung for pizza and let us use the room. And, nice. You know, stuff like that. And then, of course, all of you who came out and donated money. Yeah. It, it was wonderful. So Help for our first time out, for our first time out, to triple our goal the first time out is yeah. So now we've pretty we've, pretty amazing. So. We've got a really good baseline to work with for next year. You know, one That's thing right. I noticed as I was going, because I did uh, contribute a bit, I, I failed to... <clears throat> prep my employer for the fact that could do a corporate match to a lot of these things. And because Extra Life has uh, a lot of visibility, right. if you get ahead of it a little bit, a lot of times that, that corporate match can happen before the stream oh, is sure. over. Uh, right. So it's possible that a little bit more may come in after the fact, but you know, you got to get all that stuff processed. Uh -huh. So maybe next year I'll well, yeah, put a little I mean, bug in there that says yeah. if you work at a place that does that. <clears throat> yeah, that's the great the thing with uh, Extra Life and, and the way it's set up is uh, this thing's running year round i mean mm -hmm. until yep. we take it down it's it's yeah. up and running so it's it's constantly yep. um a point of 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 help yeah, absolutely absolutely so that that url extra life character crusade.com will be available for the foreseeable future so people can contribute anytime they want so yeah i mean if they you know, weren't able matter. to know or they didn't know or whatever might be the case yep yep um, yeah you can always jump in there so we're still holding out some slim hope that that recording will eventually finish processing and that we'll have access to the material. But right now we're re-recording things. 
we did that night just because we're assuming that it's not going to come back. It's never going to stop processing. Yeah, at this point, uh, it, it's not looking so, very good. And yeah. as we talked um, earlier, even if it does, to 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 try to chop that thing up and pull out bits oh, and pieces of it, I don't know. That's going to, I mean... You either have to really download, download. You either have to download the whole thing and, and edit it on your own machine, or you got to use the tools that YouTube gives you, which is going to cause it to re-render. Right. Yeah. Which is oh, they've also Stu and I were chatting about this so, yesterday. They've changed the tools. You can't make it quite as easy. Yeah. Chop up as before. Right. So, so, yeah, so even, we'll see. Even if it completes, it might just be and will likely be mm-hmm. as it is. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll get a wild hair and decide that if it finally renders. To do a download and see how it comes out. Yeah, we'll, we'll but, see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. But I'm, I yeah. don't think anyone here is holding their breath. No, we're it. we're keeping our eye on it, and who knows? I mean, if if at some point down the road it does completely render, then we'll publish it, and we can always we can always create links, we'll cl- timestamps, mm-hmm. timestamps mm-hmm. that go straight into certain sections. But sure. Anyway, what it, is the longest? video that you've published to date? Obviously not twenty four hours, but no, no. Uh, I think maybe. Well, shoot. Recently? Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Probably a two-hour, 20-minute. No, actually, no. Did you have I a mean, one? No, I've got recorded live streams. I have a recorded live stream that went seven hours. Oh, that may be mm. the longest one. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, I, the, the longest video that I've ever done, a produced video, has been about two and a half hours. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Wow. Who, who knows how? Who nobody Nobody knows what is going on under the hood with YouTube, and they're not. They're not certainly going to tell anyone, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're just like going to sit around and, and no see if the thing ever finishes knows. rendering. In the meantime, we'll re-record this material while we're awake and see how it turns out this time. Dude, you did it while you were sleeping. That's awesome. Oh, it was it was pretty incredible. <laughs> it, was, it was a so, rough last. Well, few since hours. it hasn't rendered, yeah. I haven't. You know, again, mm-hmm. when I was taking a couple chances to pop mm-hmm. in, I had to stop the yeah. video in order to just get the chat. Oh, so right. Well, yeah, for those of you who are around at the end of the stream, we were freaking dead at that point. <laughs> we were just hanging on by a thread. Uh, you know, and, and uh, big thank you to our guests, uh, Jessa and yeah. Rykon and Katie, who helped Woo! us pull it through at I the know. end there. Uh, for sure, but for sure. Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. I was in bad shape, and, and uh, Joe was made me look in like I was shape. sprightly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was it was pretty rugged there at the end, but... Uh, That's all right. A lot of people came out for well us worth and helped well out. It was really, really great. So we're definitely planning to do this again. Next time we do it, we're, we're going to try to make it an annual thing. So, you know, we'd be shooting for trying to do this again next fall. And uh, we're going to definitely make sure at that time that we've worked it out far enough in advance that Matt will be able to join us and we'll yes. be able to uh, spread <laughs> spread out the, the work amongst three people. I was worried so. where he was going there. <laughs> what? When I was saying spread? Yes. Yeah, I said spread too many times without really finishing that I'm really sentence. uncomfortable with that. Yeah, well. But yeah, that's, I, that's okay, Matt. I, I really bend, wish that I could have made it. Bend. Bend. Don't use the over. word moist. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get, let's get to the podcast proper, and we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff later. The plan here is we are going to talk about this topic for roughly an hour, maybe. We'll see. And then after that, uh, Matt is hopping on the gaming machine here, and we're going to play some Sticks, Master of Shadows. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I was going to get out my guitar. I was going to say, shadows. is this like a... Too much, I got too much time Double on my hands. Double loading <laughs> at dummy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a completely robot-themed thing, you know? Yeah. You'll get the gist. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> all right. So, tonight's topic is sacrificing power for role play. Uh, and uh, I think this is a cool topic just because it's something that we do all the time. We don't think about an awful lot while we're doing it. Right. Um, but we do it and don't realize it. And uh, there have been many, many times, I think, when I have not just bypassed a weapon or put a weapon on the shelf because I felt like it wasn't appropriate for my character at that point, but there have been a lot of times when I've also bypassed things like perks Mm-hmm. or um, in-game powers because I felt like they sure. just weren't right for right. my character. So I guess to start the discussion, <clears throat> it might be kind of interesting to sort of go around the table and 
start thinking of some examples of when we've done this before, um, either literally or, you know, like you can think of a specific character who did a thing or an example that we can think of, of, of this kind of thing in action. What I like about it is a lot of times it's, it's a really great way to help illustrate some kind of weakness that your character has. And there was a great discussion on Discord last week where we were talking about this, this idea of weakness in characters. And um, uh, Madix Gaming was mentioning about you know, his, his character, how he was saying that he was going to create a weakness for his character where he was missing a thumb on his left hand, so he wasn't going to wield any weapons in the left hand or shields, but he was going to focus on spells in the left hand, and there were some other things that he, were, huh. he was going to do wow. associated with that, right? So... Very cool. There, it's it's a self-imposed restriction, right? But he is also adhering to this concept of you know he's bypassing the obvious benefits of having a shield. Oh, for sure, for right? Sure. Uh, for the um, sake of his role play. Yeah, I I could almost argue that you could probably still have a character that could use a shield in that case, but it would certainly be not nearly as effective. So mm -hmm. since you know the game mechanics don't allow you to scale your <laughs> ability in that way uh, i think removing the the option <coughs> is uh is a great is a great uh way to do that yeah that's I think very so cool too. with um, my red guard she tends not to use big bladed weapons but it, it isn't necessarily by choice it's a it's a preference for the bow more than anything else. Okay. Just sort of eschewing the, the right. bigger weapons, which is a problem when you start, you know, getting into some areas where having massive force would be a lot better, you know, to have a warhammer yeah, or that, a, that you know, claymore or something. Bigger, yeah, that bigger swing. I mean, it's definitely slower, which is kind of the trade-off, <coughs> but when it hits, it hits hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes out of her way to find whatever best arrows that she can and, you know, keeps a sure. raft of everything. But, you know, well, that's kind of funny because actually I, I think Sanak is um, almost exact opposite. Really? He doesn't use any ranged weapons. Uh, he doesn't carry a bow. He's always passing up arrows because he has no use for them. It's I mean, like picking up pennies, right? Well, yeah. It's just, <laughs> why, why would I carry his arrow? I don't have anything to use him with. I mean, he, that's just not his, his thing. He's never been good at it. He doesn't use it. Right. Can um, you use arrows as kindling? I wish I wish you could. Because that would be God, great. wouldn't that be great? Well, yeah. with, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Is it? Campfire? Campfire, you can create, like, practice arrows. You can create arrows with okay. wood. It would be oh, really? it would be cool if you could deconstruct it. That would be cool if you could if you could use, like, iron arrows for kindling or something. Yeah, just, like right, right. It, life is so bad, I've got, mm -hmm. you know, I've got all these on. arrows. I've got all these arrows. Yeah. I might as well do something productive with it. Oh, ten, <laughs> ten arrows equals one unit of kindling, and then when you burn them, you those ten arrows, you get one iron ingot back in your inventory. There you go. There you go for yep. the arrowheads. There all you right, go. mod suggestion. There you go. Totally. It's done. Somebody so, build that now. <laughs> I can't imagine myself So that would be kind of... I would. Why, Why not? not? Yeah. I suppose. I'd have so, to get a campfire mod uh -huh. installed. I'd have to get some mods installed. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. that, yeah. Well, it, th to me, this seems like maybe an expansion for Cap f Campfire or Hunterborn, right? Mm -hmm. Where, uh, because if you're going to do that, why not have a scenario where, you know, you can use cow patties to start a fire and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Well, right? then you got to introduce them. I don't yeah. think I've ever come across a cow patty. Well, see, this is where this is where you'd use the Hunterborn mechanic, where you just pie. forage. You just forage. <laughs> you can't see it in the environment. You just forage, and then hey, look it! I've got I've got enough cow shit to start a fire the, here. Yeah, the so, thing is, is that if you're going to do it for shit. cows, you're going to have to make sure that it's available with the mammoths. Yeah, well, which is going to make for a mess <laughs> wow. while you're running Bonfire. around. Bonfire. <laughs> you're trying to take down a giant. Oh, I'm stuck again. Okay, yet another mod: <laughs> Scat of Skyrim. Scat of Skyrim. Immersive <laughs> Scat. And, 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 immersive. Four. And we're not K talking about the, 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 the vocal. Mm -hmm. The vocalization. Yeah. <laughs> scat of Skyrim. I posted something I sort of like month. Scat the other day on Discord. Some people like it. You posted yeah, shit on. What? Yeah, yeah, I, sh I shit on Discord quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of wa warned people. I, I put this. Uh, so I was I was loading up my game. I was waiting for things to happen, and while that was going, I started sort of beatboxing into my microphone. <coughs> and I oh sort yeah, of you did. Forgot I, I was yes. recording it. Yes, uh, yes that's so out there. that's excellent. Yeah, but you're not going to give us a rendition right now. No. Okay. Uh, 
No, shite, shite of Skyrim. Immersive shite of Skyrim. The immersive. Well, it's got to be immersive. Yeah. Shite. Yeah. Yes. Immersive. Yes. Yes. Full, fully immersive, but not overpowered. <laughs> Over- no, I think overpowering shite. shite of Skyrim would have to. <laughs> that mammoth dung is so OP. Yeah, I know, right? Well, then you think of all the possibilities. Now, now it becomes like a material ingredient for other things that you could make. Oh, sure. Sure. Like, like some kind of explosive? Like yeah, like like an explosive <laughs> uh paste. roofing material. Or or some kind of a some kind of a a, a facial cleanser or mask. Oh, really? You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exfoliating. <laughs> Uh, hey, I don't think I'd do that. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would either, think that but... people might use the crab chitin before they use the <laughs> mammoth <laughs> dung. <laughs> <clears throat> crab chitin? I... <laughs> I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, okay, we're grossing everyone out here. Ooh, dragon dung. That's kind of like volendrung. Reminds me of dragon dung. You could have a, ha- a giant hammer, a shit hammer. <laughs> God, I love this riffing. This is so creative, people. <laughs> How many did we lose? Dragon dung. That, I don't know. Actually, uh, I don't know. Kind of makes me wonder why there aren't dragon dung beetles. <gasps> oh my word! That didn't they even would occur. They would be huge. They would be huge. <laughs> they and, would be huge. And dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Extraordinarily dangerous. Okay, well we're grossing out Terry, so we're gonna move on. I'm sorry, Terry. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> where what were was this podcast about again? Eschewing. Um, Powerful things for role play. Okay, powerful shits for role play. Is that, <laughs> I, I, I totally <laughs> lost track of what we're talking about. Uh, what things are you giving up for better role play? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Sanity? That, no, uh, no, Obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Any sense of good That's taste? That's an important part. Yes, exactly. Um, um, so one of the other things. Dignity. <laughs> Dignity. <laughs> no, you have to have dignity before you can give it up. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry. I think we gave that up for the podcast, actually. That leave it at the door. Mm-hmm. Every time we come check in, your dignity there's some the out there. Door. Check your dignity at the door. Yeah. Uh, oh, we yeah. should have that, like an on air sign that says on air, check your dignity at the door. <laughs> I was thinking maybe that would be the title Perfect. of this podcast. <coughs> Episode 56 Check Your Dignity at the Door. Yeah. We should totally like make a sign add on for House of Troubles that says "Check your dignity." That here. would be great. That's what Blot could be doing when you come. Oh, in there the you lobby, go. I right? still got a. I still yeah. I, I still need a little bit of cleanup. Yeah. Know, so maybe we could <laughs> roll that into the next version. That's right. Oh yeah. By the way, we forgot to mention those two mods came out. Uh, oh yeah, middle of last barrels week. and House of Troubles. House of Troubles. I'm interested to know how much SE. work it took. Did it? I mean, was it a lot of rework to get it for SE? Uh, it was a lot of work for Cal and Dark Fox 127. <laughs> so Cal and yeah, Dark Fox. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. Oh um, god, yeah. Yeah, um, and and we've been like really kind of amazed by the response. A lot of people are trying them out, which is pretty yeah, darn cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't for the most part, I don't think the conversions are necessarily difficult, um especially for the House of Troubles which primarily uses all the normal assets there's nearly with the exception of some of the barrels in the basement mm. yeah uh, there really aren't any specialty textures or yeah. anything okay. like that so uh the smugglers barrels took a little more effort which is why we yep. petitioned and drug dark fox down yeah <laughs> um to help with some of the scripting and, and yeah. getting that squared away while he so. was working was he asking simsum to just keep you busy to stop asking for more stuff uh <laughs> I, who knows who knows but uh yeah. So yeah, those are both out <clears throat> and uh, working working well. They seem to be working well. We we've, we've tested them. I I'm running them both in my games and they're working great. So well, as my dad used to say, if you like what you see, tell your friends. If you've got any problem, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so if you're running any troubles, forward. please let us know and uh, yeah, so we sure. can address it. Yep. Um so anyways, we were talking about this topic which topic was that again, Stu? It was, I think it was immersive <laughs> shit in Skyrim. <laughs> I, I still can't get past that. Shite. Oh, shite. yes, immersive shite. That's with an E. Yeah. They don't, you know, no, <laughs> nobody refers to to dung in, in this game, do they? It's no, Nobody poops in this game. What's going on? That's true, but there are out, outhouses. There are outhouses, aren't there? 
Well, there's outhouses in our mod. Well, that's true. There is one <laughs> just on the other side of the border. There's, there's actually is. two. Yeah. If you want, you can go across into like Hammerfeld or Cyrodiil, whichever it is, and you can take a dump over there. Yeah. There's, or there's a place to do that. There's an outhouse uh, on our side, too, you down by the camping You can't get into area. the building across the street, but you can take a dump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's guarded. I mean, they won't let you. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. That's... They might charge you to go take a dump. <laughs> that'd be funny. We should put a... What? <laughs> Put a fee on you have to, you, <laughs> In order to get in, you have to drop a septum. Like in order to operated. drop one, you got to yeah, drop yeah. a septum. <laughs> Check your dignity actually, at the door. Give us a septum. Drop one that's, to drop that's two. That's actually not unheard of uh, over in the European <laughs> no, countries. No, they do the same thing with uh, oh, yeah. pay-as-you-go showers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think more more houses could have, you know, because yeah. you wouldn't run out of hot water quite so fast yeah. if people had to keep paying. Yeah, the uh, the vanilla game doesn't have any outhouses in it that I'm aware of, but there are mm-hmm. a lot of mods that include them, which is pretty cool. Okay, that's All where right. that came. Gotcha. Yep. yep. So you need custom. Yep. Scroll work on the door to. <laughs> yeah. Signify. Yeah, they have moon cutouts in the door. I think. There's no double deckers that I'm aware of though. Oh. <laughs> No. Those are management outhouses. Yes. Come on. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, I, I, you don't want to be the guy in the bottom suite. But uh, yeah, it's um, kind of funny. They're, one of the mods that I use for Fleet Story is a mod called Mammoth Manor, and it creates a, a really nice house kind of on Lake Illinolta, and I use it as a jumping off point for characters in the Burn Company, and it comes with an outhouse. Cool. And there was a scene I was filming there where I thought it would be funny because. Haldir was walking along the lake, and it was this long, meandering scene. It was part of uh, what you helped me record uh, voice for, right? He walks; He's walking along the lake, and he gets to the house, and I'm thinking, it'd be nice. He should just stop in the outhouse, right? <laughs> and so I went in the outhouse, closed the door. He sat down, the whole thing. Uh, but then I got stuck. I got oh, no. stuck in there. Oh, like no. I couldn't get out <laughs> oh, at that no. point. I couldn't get out. I had to reload the game and run all the way back. Oh, so no. uh, Haldir got, yeah, Hal. Hall Deer had like a massive dump. He got he actually he actually got stuck in the outhouse. Well, I think that, but see, that's when if you can get to play Skyrim together, right, with other players, you can say, "Help me! I'm stuck somewhere," and they can come and help you out. Yeah, right. I think. Uh, um, hey, Hall the, Deer, old, the only, old man stuck honestly, on the shitter again. Somebody run I'm, down I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to let you out if you give me that spell tome. Uh-huh. I'm seeing a great opportunity for uh, Marl and Mister Sarrow. You think? Yeah, How so? Oh, well, Marl gets stuck. And... Well, Mar or Mr. Cero spending a lot of time in the outhouse. And... Well, yeah, that's true. Goodness, Mr. Cero. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see that. Like, um, yeah, Vander's encounter with Rumarin, who was sitting on the john with the, <laughs> with the door open. And he, Worst roommate ever. Oh, my God. Yes, I remember that. that Worst roommate ever. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Strudel. You've you've joined us. You've joined us for the discussion Ooh. of defecation. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. We uh, we're we're slowly trying to recover. It's difficult to do. So we're trying. We're doing the best we can. Um. So we were talking about this topic of sacrificing power uh, for role play, and. We were kind of going around trying to come up with some examples. There were the obvious ones. But we had gotten on this this topic of talking about what I like about this is how it leads into other things, right? So you can start out by saying that I want to create a character who, you know, is is not going to use this type of weapon or is not going to use this this type of armor or or something like that but it can lead into a whole lot of other things so uh we've we've had uh listeners talking about things like you know missing limbs like a missing thumb uh curses stuff like that Mm -hmm. so if we if we follow this if we follow this branch in, in all of its directions right you can you can take this in a lot of different directions so you can say not not only am i going to pass up this this idea of, of using two-handed weapons because I have one hand that's disabled or using a shield because the hand's disabled. But mm-hmm. then you get into that question of, okay, uh, what's wrong with that appendage, right? And then how, oh, did, yeah. it, how yeah. did it get that way? Was it by yeah. right? birth or was right? it uh, right? something happened? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now you're, um, now you're getting into the idea of technical weaknesses in game. What are you doing with game mechanics? But then now also what are you doing with 
character's weakness and character history and background. Yeah, character development. Uh, it leads to all kinds of interesting things. Oh, sure, I think. sure. So I, I think that's a really important thing. Um, I think the thing that I like to emphasize about it is is how we tend to do it subconsciously. And since I've rebuilt my machine and I've had the <laughs> the honor and privilege <laughs> of you were going back say misfortune, to, but... to rebuild uh, several characters again, it's given me an op opportunity to also focus, I think, their perks a bit more hmm. and think about ways that I was going to sacrifice on the perk side of things. Sure, right? sure. So knowing that that Marl is basically a staff and sword type of character. Right. It seemed plausible to me that I could invest some points or some perks in one-handed, right? Because one of the things we've talked about in his story is he mentions in the story about how he had some training, official training, you know, uh, formal training from somebody uh, as a youth in how to use the sword. Right. But keeping that in mind, right, uh, when I'm rebuilding the character, I'm looking at all those perks and I'm seeing, okay, here's all these one-handed perks. I could get all kinds of bonuses on damage and criticals and power attacks and all this stuff. But what makes sense based on what I know of Marl, he's an academic and he's picked up a sword now after probably not handling a sword for who knows, a couple hundred years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Realistically, like, yeah. He, he's so an, he he's and an the older sword fella, are rusty. Right? Yes. So yeah, what is how do we represent that in game? Like, right. uh, even when he was in his prime, just learning how to use the sword, what perks might he have had? And now, right. given all of this time off, what do we dial back? Sure. So you know, there's an opportunity to grasp at power with perks, but holding off on on perks, for example, is one way that we can do mm -hmm. that. And there, there are I'm sure there are many other ways. Well, uh, when I was playing Inaroth, uh, she actually did little to no smithing. Okay. Um, she just wasn't a smith. Mm -hmm. Now, I was able to get around that with the, uh, is it the Honed Metal? Right. Uh, which is yeah. a mod that introduces the ability to <coughs> purchase weapons and have them a smith upgrade them for you. And I think it also got into some some of the, the, the other craft mm -hmm. skills as well. But, uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. I I mean, like the trade-off like there <coughs> is you have to spend the money. But I like the idea the of being able to have but the ability to pay somebody whose yeah, job yeah, it is to do that. Her, right? her, it makes sense. She wasn't a smith. It wasn't where her focus was, so it didn't mm -hmm. make sense to follow that tree. Right, but you can I mean, you can pay somebody to teach you how to sneak or pickpocket or whatever. It seems reasonable that you could pay somebody to do that, not just teach you how to do mm -hmm. it. Right, to just do it. Yeah. I mean, that's right. kind of, I guess, what smiths do. Right? And in that's, theory, that's the reason they have, have, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, not no. to let you oh, just no. come this in is... and use all their stuff all the time. <laughs> this is really sort of a training camp. I we don't need any of your money. I money on materials. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so uh, that was kind of, that was, that was actually kind of fun. I enjoyed that mod yeah. actually a lot. That's a cool idea. It, it forces you to sort of put off certain advancements for a while while yeah. you it find also, the right smith and yeah. get enough money to pay for well, it. Well, yeah, and that was actually, things, right? yeah, that for, a, for a long time, uh, that, was, that was the goal, was to mm -hmm. find a smith that I could, because the mod will also let you designate people to be smiths. Oh, sure. Uh, so Mr. Wack is a smith. So in uh, Tundra yeah, Defense, sure. when I was creating her subterranean compound, right. that comes with a widow that you can get smithing equipment from. Oh. So, but the widow herself is not a blacksmith. Oh. So but you could with honed him. metal, I was able to make her a blacksmith. That's so cool. So she was my subterranean blacksmith. Joe, that's cool. great. Creating jobs. I am. I'm a job creator. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, What's, what's kind of fun about doing that kind of stuff, too, if you can, um, if, you, if you can access the right mods to, to help you in the mechanics make it work, it gives you the ability to take those points and maybe put them into a different focus. So mm -hmm. maybe you want to be the alchemist or, or the, the powerful spellcaster. It gives you more leverage to focus on that area yeah, I agree. without feeling, well, I need to right. have weapons that are at least good or armor that I can yeah. hold up against. Yep. Um, so Sometimes <laughs> there's, there's, there's uh, 
there's gems, you know, storytelling gems to be found in the constant struggle to stay alive at early <laughs> levels too. Well, which that's which very I can true. say when you're talking you know. about improving armor, <laughs> when you have no armor, that makes for a very challenging way to stay I, alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do not so. doubt that to be true. When when yeah. you don't realize that you don't have the armor on, it it forces you to. I mean, you can only smith up battle. a cod piece for, you know, <laughs> to be so good. That's very true. Yeah. But it wasn't intentional. I mean, it but it's one Conan, of those things. If, if you can't, <laughs> if you don't have any armor to improve because you're stupid mm-hmm. and you didn't pay attention to it, <laughs> and uh, you're always in first person. Yeah, and you're always. <laughs> in, yeah, well, you know, wow, I was really surprised that I got injured to death by that dart. <laughs> you know, oh injured look, a rabbit death. nibbled on my foot and I died. Yeah. You know, yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. And let's just say that I go a little bit more to the extreme on the armor now mm-hmm. that I've realized what it's like to run around without it. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, it yeah. does make you appreciate. It does, and you stay warmer, by the way. True. Uh, yes. True. <laughs> that is a fact. I, I never thought about in you know putting in frostfall or whatever uh, for Einar Stikander, but it wouldn't last very long. Uh, yeah. Even as a Nord, he probably would have froze to death yeah, without some would've. clothing. Yep. 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 Out and about for a few minutes, then run back to the outhouse. Yeah, <laughs> especially well, especially if he was doing the uh, what did we call it? The run up the throat of the world. Oh yeah, yeah, what? running the members up and down the throat yeah, of the world. Yeah, yeah, running, yeah, the running naked, m- naked Nord Society. Yes. Yeah, running our members up and down the throat, the throat of the world. Of the world. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> no innuendo there at all. No, uh, no. So that you know, I I think the interesting thing here is is Terry is making a great a great comment in here too she's talking about the idea of sacrificing certain quests for the sake of storytelling right Mm -hmm. so yeah that's another it would be possible for you to jump from one end of skyrim to the other taking on quests willy-nilly because you know the outcome is going to make you more powerful right so i'm going to go to riften and i'm going to go to the temple of mara so that i can increase my magic resistance right you know what i'm going to do that and then oh yeah well i'm there i'm just going to happen to Pop on down to the docks, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up that, I'm gonna pick up that that cube and run off and you know get my bonus on smithing, you know, and then I'm gonna, you know, you can do all that stuff, but the challenge is like stringing it all together into something that actually makes, makes freaking mm-hmm. sense, and by doing that, yeah, otherwise you're, you're it, putting these things off till later, or maybe you never do them. Yeah, otherwise it just turns into a checklist, which yeah, that's dumb. Know, what, which that, which I, fun in I that? think that. There needs to be some other pieces, like when you are walking all over the place, your shoes never wear out, right? I guess that's You never true. have to reshoe a horse, true right? True enough, yeah. I mean, with all the distance that's covered, you know, since there's no Skyrim version yeah, of a Fitbit. Yeah, you should pretty much be, be having to buy new boots at every town. All the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's rough out there. <laughs> yeah. Cobblestone isn't that smart. Yeah. And nope, nope. Yeah. Gosh, these are wet. Yeah, it'd be kind of interesting to add <laughs> add, a, foot. add a cobbler's <laughs> shop to every city, to right? Every city. And you would have to have it next to the physician who can treat you for trench foot, right? Yes. I need to have my well, boots. Well, yeah, I mean, sold. actually, you could introduce a mechanic that would slow you down if you don't get your foot gear, your that's footwear true. Yep. prepared. That would be one of those that's just like Frostfall, where I would not use it in any of my stories. But <laughs> I would encourage other people to use it for the sake of role playing. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Skis. My, you, all you... of my characters have indestructible feet. <laughs> yeah. Especially Vander. Yes. And magic boots. <laughs> yeah, dude, Vander is awesome. He's literally running out of his shoes all the time. Yes. Pretty much. Well, that's why he switched from shoes to boots now. Oh, because they're more durable. Lace yeah. them up to his calves and hold them on. Yeah. Well, yeah, it... it well, they're the, more the, like buckles, but... The, the change was actually spawned by the fact that there are some problems with uh, the textures around the character's ankles and SE. Oh, and it looks really dumb. So I Does switched he have them. Ankles or what? Oh, well, <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just looks weird. Like the textures are incomplete. You can see seams around the ankles. Oh, weird. And it, so it it gives him sort of a Frankenstein esque look. Like, well, we found these great feet and sewed them on. <laughs> That's what kind of what it looks like. <laughs> it's uh, not that bad, actually. I think it, it they pair up pretty well. <clears throat> well, oh, are you talking the new ones or the the, the ones that came with? He was talking about his. Original I'm talking feed. about SE. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, when yeah. I when I used that yeah, setup, I wasn't listening. Sorry. When I, well, I'm used to that, Joe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when I when I used that in Legacy, it worked great, but something something or other has changed. I don't know if it's. 
the version of the Letho armor that I'm using for him in the SE, or it's something with the vanilla textures in SE. But when you get down to that ankle region, there's just no smooth transition from the bottom of the leg to the foot. And it looks really strange. And it didn't matter what kind of shoes I tried. I couldn't get it to work. Hmm. So he switched over to boots, and I just worked it into the story. Right? I mean, he didn't want trench foot. His athlete's foot was flaring up. <laughs> and so he went to something that would keep his feet drier. You know, boots. Who's the manufacturer of the boots? The boots? Oh, these are strictly Adidas He's an Adidas man. <laughs> Adidas. Yeah. Vander's all Adidas all the if, time. If Vander comes out with a Skyrim version of my Adidas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that'll be a God, Patreon ad. I could totally see I could totally see Vander and like Chuck Taylor's or Vans. That, that would, oh, that's I what think he would Vans wear. all the way. Yeah, Van, maybe like Vansters. checkerboard Vans. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> He's yeah. definitely a Vans guy. I think he would be a longboard kind of a rider, don't you? <laughs> a longboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't think he'd want one of those you Whereas, know, 1970s banana skateboards. I think he'd go for one of the big ones. Marl would be more of a Segway guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Marl might be sort of a golf cart kind of a guy. <laughs> oh, <cart>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Whack Whack driving. Well, I could see Whack, Mr. Whack driving a golf cart. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that was perfect. That's oh, perfect. my word. Doing this little driver hop. <laughs> yeah, driver hop. Well, yes. he'd be, wouldn't he be standing on the seat, do you think? He might need to stand. He might need to stand. He's I don't think he could short. reach the pedals. Yeah. <laughs> whack, whack, drive. Bigger. Carta. <laughs> that would be so great. Slow down, Mr. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Mr. Whack, where is the fire? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> That would just be so great. Oh, I All of these now. great mod ideas. Just see him holding on. He's got the equivalent of a golf bag on the back with like 10 stabs sticking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whack. Honestly. <laughs> oh, so funny. Get me a number seven staff. <laughs> I can't yes, I, reach there from I here. I need something with range. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this oh, is getting no, good. No, that will never do. Yeah. Yes. This is just a, th- a short tr- a chip. A chip up onto the up onto the top of the plateau. See, speaking of that, without ruining the mm-hmm. entire game, I, I think that disc golf in Skyrim would be epic. Oh, disc, it, disc golf. Disc would golf. Be, would be, actually. Some sort of version, you know. Yeah. I mean, you have the entire environment. It seems I love like it disc would... golf. <laughs> yeah, but how do you how do you uh, think that Marl would do in disc golf or think, Robard or I think Marl Miroth. would suck at it. I think I think Robard would be great at it because he's got he's tall, he's got long arms and a lot of leverage. Yeah, he'd totally be. I think I think he'd how about Enoroth? Everyone to town. Enoroth wouldn't play. <laughs> She'd eat the frisbee. <laughs> <She'd> eat the... <laughs> <laughs> There'd be two puncture holes in every disc. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. In the middle of her story. Mm. <laughs> oh, she gets into disc golfing later. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, afterwards. Yeah. In her golden years. In her golden years. <laughs> it's so relaxing. Look how far I can throw it from up here. <laughs> <laughs> the throw to the world. Look at the glide time. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that'll hit anyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my Anheuser is pronounced from up here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh man, we are so far off topic. We we are now. We're talking about disc golf. Okay, so far we've talked about poop and disc golf, and regular golf, and regular golf, and segways, and segways, and longboards, and vans, really and Chuck really Taylors. <laughs> this pretty is my favorite every, podcast ever. Pretty much everything except what we were going to. Everything that means anything. Well, done. we did go through some of the things <laughs> we, we might we give did. up for role play. And, you know, there yeah. was maybe some, not an hour's worth. Some brief yeah. examples, but yeah. Well, I have some characters who've like given up the power of ale for role play. Dang. Yeah, Stu, I know, right? Joe is very confused. <laughs> you know, Joe's like, why would you do that? <laughs> that would be a crippling handicap. You could never do that. <laughs> With as he's got the mug poised in That's his lips. That's totally not like, realistic. Why My would you get God, that? man. Uh-huh. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would be the hardest thing for Robard to give up? Okay, this is a great question. Smoking? He couldn't, get, yeah, giving up the smokes. I was going to say, giving up the cushweed would be a problem, I think, big time. 
Uh, you know, the other thing that would be difficult is not giving something up necessarily, but kind of the reverse, like forcing him to get a real job. Like if he had to work a real job, <laughs> he's kind of a, he is kind of allergic to physical labor, isn't he? Well, mm, not necessarily. I not think necessarily. honest, honest labor, <laughs> honest okay. labor. yeah, that honest labor. That's that that's a better better characterization. Yeah. Uh, how about a, how about you? What's that? What would be the hardest thing mm -hmm. for one of my characters to give up? Yeah. Oh, um, I don't know. Sanok to give up not using a bow? <laughs> that sounds confusing, doesn't it? <laughs> Double negative. You have to <laughs> use it. What if, no, okay, no. Uh, obviously, Sanok is, is Dwemer, right? And what about the idea, what if somebody said, hey, you just absolutely can't wear Dwemer armor anymore? Like, he, he couldn't wear that armor that's symbolic of his culture. Would that be an issue? That would be t that would be difficult right now okay. because yeah, he's he's very still he's still very much tied to his heritage to his mm. culture. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah, that would so make a big giving difference. up anything that represents that yeah. would be difficult. Being forced to give it up, like jailed and released only. Oh Jesus! Yeah, have it confiscated or something yeah. that could be devastating to a and character who's who's like it's kind literally of the identity. last of his. Like put, on, like put on display in the town square. Like you'll never oh, get this again. Yeah. You know? Caselmo takes it and puts it in his museum. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> That's authentic. God damn it. <laughs> Look at the battle damage. <laughs> authentic <laughs> battle damage. <laughs> I think you might have to write that into your, your story. <laughs> Because uh, Selmo is like, you know, because sometimes you get that letter from Caselmo. Right, right, because you have something. In. Yeah. He's got, because <laughs> you got something Dwemer, he, he's trying to collect. <laughs> Here you go. Shitty dagger. I'm going to need your armor now. <laughs> what? What about these arrows? <laughs> how about these arrows? <laughs> That's not why I came here. <laughs> I already have 50,000 arrows in the museum. I actually haven't decided how or if I'll yeah. actually even fit that into his story, to be honest. Something oh. to consider. Yeah. I mean, it makes, on the surface, it makes complete sense, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah. But as far as what would I, I mean, yeah, to give up what you relate to as part of your heritage would be difficult. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Well, when you think about his studies and the stuff that he's passionate about, too, that's outside of these cultural questions, there's probably aspects of that, too. Um, if, I mean, right now, as a character, he's kind of all about learning. He's trying to find out yes. as much as he can. He's trying to unlock a mystery, really. Right. right? I guess, yeah, if, if, so, if he were to be, you know, forbade to in, remain in the, in the, win, in Winterhold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or to enter the library or right. whatever. Yeah. That would Ooh, be that difficult. Would that would be very difficult. Yeah. Um, let's see. Inarath, what would be difficult for her to give up? Um, well, in, in the height before, before she ended, probably control. Mm. Yeah. Because she was very driven and controlling. Something less material. It's more of a... Mm -hmm. Right. An emotional... Sacrifice, yeah, that would be, yeah, you know, I get it's it's in her nature to want to be in control of everything because that's how she views her her ability to survive is somehow hinges on her ability to control everything. Yeah, just pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if she's got to give that up, if she if she's forced to give up control, then, then who is she that subject would be to? Really, really, right? Traumatic. Who would be the hardest person to be subject to in a case like that? Like if you had been. If she had been taken prisoner, or if she had been <laughs> um, that's, bounty hunted, or whatever, that's right? Pretty easy. That would be uh, um, Ulfric. Mm. If mm. she had to, if she had to answer to Ulfric or the Stormcloaks, that would be almost unbearable. Answer to the lowliest Stormcloak. Stormcloak. Yeah, that would be unbearable. Mm -hmm. Because it, because at least if you have to answer to Ulfric, at least it's <clears throat> you know. Well, Headman yeah, himself, that's right? true, but yeah, I mean, he's also in a position where he would designate someone mm -hmm. to take care of that type of work for right. him. So, yeah, that would uh, 
going and gathering mm-hmm. cow chips. Yeah. She would probably be trying to escape every moment she could. That is a career choice. For some. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. How about now? What about Einar Stigander? I mean, I besides didn't get the far obvious, up with Einar Stigander. I, I think besides that his clothes, his <laughs> sister Inga. No I think problem. The, the, no the, problem. In the in the role play Check. side of things, I think the hardest problem for her would be to give up. She has this, oh, this she's got problem with moon sugar problems, right? Um, mm, right which was right, really right. kind of you know fun as a kid. It wasn't a big deal. It helped mm-hmm. her you know get through all the studies and everything. But now that she's made it into Skyrim, skooma right. is a big problem. Right. Uh, and so it. It affects everything, <laughs> but it's mainly because it's it's a huge crutch. Uh, but she doesn't really feel very capable without it, despite its ill effects. <clears throat> right. 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 There's always a fair so, stash in the inventory. <laughs> yeah. So how how do you think? I mean, what kind of reaction? What kind of withdrawal would she go through if if she were physically <laughs> not able? Well, to? she she's not horribly brutal. I th- I think that if you put her through skooma withdrawal, she would just go into berserker mode. And okay. it wouldn't really matter who was around. It wouldn't be time for questioning. You wouldn't go in and trade stuff. You would just go in and slaughter everybody and take everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, bounties be damned. It was just, I'm going to, this is mine. Mm-hmm. You know, you've taken the one thing from me that gave me some sense of con- connection to my childhood. Right. Uh, and, and now I'm going to make you pay, even if you had nothing to do with it. Yeah. You're upright. If you- and you're in the pay. way, you're in the way. You're in the yeah. way, yes. Exactly. It always starts so innocent. You know, it lo- it looked just like a pixie stick. Right. That first <laughs> dose of moon sugar. The little sugar, bit of moon sugar. Yeah. You know, the first moon sugar, and then there you go. And that's that's the thing, you know. And, yeah. and trying to role play something like that when you've never gone through that personally, right? I've never been, right. you know, connected to any withdrawal. kind of... Right. And uh, uh, just look at it from the effects that you can project onto your mm-hmm. character. But knowing the effects of when you immediately remove something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know that when you are imprisoned in the game, you only lose stuff that you have stolen. Skooma, I don't think, is stolen, is it? It can be like any object, but... I suppose um, it can be. (coughs) You're right, though. You you don't lose it. You would have to... You'd have to to play play that and drop it it and drop it somewhere. Which, (laughs) when I was playing through a couple weeks ago trying to get out of... uh, uh, Dwemer, whatever, uh, the place where I was stuck underground for whatever. Most that could be a number of Dwemer Mulst, places. What was that? I can't remember. I can't remember. Mazolft. Mazolft. Yeah. I was in Mazolft for like 10 You know that underground hours. Dwemer place? Uh, <laughs> it's the only one that I've been in because I was in there forever. <laughs> so, I mean, there are probably people on the stream now who were laughing and just horribly surprise they're they're helping find my they're, way out, but every, they were so you, awesome Matt. at helping me out uh-huh. uh, it's just one of those when you realize that you need help mm-hmm. it's time to ask but so yeah cool all right so that's really the only thing that i can think of right now because uh-huh. she's the one who's been role played the most uh, right. with the pc issues that i've been having i've been playing way more on xbox okay so cool which but you that, can now get mods for I you can. Know. I haven't. I haven't been very keen on trying to go do mods on the Xbox yet. Right. Should try it. Get a few. You know, there's there's Play a few. A little there, bit. There's a yeah. few. There's a few good ones in there. I'm not you know, probably sure going to start with 4K tree bark. I'd rather start with something that, yeah. that might. I'm not sure if they're. <clears throat> I'd skip that 4K tree bark altogether. I don't know. It's pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. Even though I can. It's only pretty download, rough. I I only download the 2K, but. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. I just load it twice. <laughs> just load it twice. I, <laughs> I duplicate it. Yeah. And then I Once load for it each monitor. It saves overhead. <laughs> yeah. A- a- each tree you see in the environment is actually two trees stacked on top of one another. Actually, if you can do it just two pixels apart, it'll look uh-huh. 3D. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm actually thinking Squint. of maybe saving it out at uh-huh. a lower resolution and just loading it four times. Ooh. Impressive. So you could process it. I could. Um, four times. Uh-huh. <laughs> Save four times the space. Absolutely. Every forest has one tree in it. <laughs> it's 50 trees stacked on top of one another. That would that would be like playing Skyrim in North Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boring! <laughs> it's going to be really hard to hide from anything behind uh-huh. the one tree that is on the other side of the mountain. Of course, what I would do is I would, I would modify one of the deer to look like a pronghorn antelope. 
and then I'd like amplify their spawn points by like 50. <laughs> so you get big herds of pronghorn running around. You know. uh, pronghorn <laughs> antelope. Gorgeous creatures. How about a way. jackalope? I don't Ooh, think those are real. I no, I know, but who cares? God, someone should make a jackalope for Skyrim. Oh, lots of taxidermists like, do. Oh, one jackalope. Just one. Just it would. One. It would be like the best Easter egg. It spawns once and never goes away. But you know, if you can find it, where yeah. would where would you place such a thing? What's the native habitat of a jackalope? Of a jackalope? I, are they a prairie well, creature? or Traditionally, I think they're, because it's a jackrabbit, right? Yep. It's crossed with an antelope, which means it's a prairie creature. Yep. So, but, And and jackrabbits are freakish, man. It's like They're it's enormous. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like a, somebody took a rabbit and crossed it with a kangaroo. It's what it looks like <laughs> to me. But, now, uh, I, I, have, I don't know if I've seen a jackrabbit. I've seen hares, which I think are roughly the same. But not for same. a while now. Not for a oh. while. Not for. A while. Oh. See, I'm trying to. I'm trying to compensate. I can't grow it on the top of my head, so I might as well grow <laughs> Chewbacca on it's the. It's been front. so long since I've seen hair. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I mean, the, when I, the first time I saw a hair in the wild, I thought it was a dog, like a lab, because they're, oh, really? they're, they're that big. big. They're wow. really sizable. So, but I think a, I think a jackalope mod would be awesome. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the reach. Good point. If mm-hmm. you could, so. if you could make a jackalope follower mod, like you have to find it first, mm-hmm. and then it will follow you forever, like the chicken mm-hmm. or something. How about know? a skeevalope? A ski, <laughs> a skeevalope. <laughs> See now, if you could, if you could train it as some sort of a defense mechanism, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. a, a huge rack of it, you know. I just want to, I just want a mod that re renames, like renames all of my skeevers to R O U S S. There you yeah, go. I think that, that would, would be, be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Classic. <laughs> I've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what are you guys on? We are on our last Stop. legs. We are, perhaps. I I only have one set. I, I'm assuming they're my last legs. Yeah, I have crazy in, sh- in circulation problems, too, so my legs are done. <laughs> I'm pretty Actually, sure I don't understand the question. I, I think the question... <laughs> I'm fairly sure that most of this has to do with eating a wreck uh, every time we start our broadcast. Are we on borrowed time? Jalapenos. Uh, well, I think everyone's on borrowed time if you think about it. But who are we borrowing from? And we're not technically paying it back. Know. We're just using it up. True. Oh, right. I have no intention of paying this Selfish back. Selfish consumers. <laughs> I'm filing for bankruptcy just before <laughs> I die. End. Yeah, that's be my last I'm act, my last back. breath. I will. I will sign that last document. <laughs> <laughs> Transfer okay. Transfer all my assets to nobody. I think right. what we are actually on is the fact that we haven't all three been in the same room for quite some time. It's been like yeah. a month. It's exciting. We're on it adrenaline. Is. It's it exciting. It's been so long, our shirts don't even match anymore. I know. What the hell? Last time we were in this room together, it was kind of a a three play cha- train wreck of sorts. Um, I mean, do you mean the hidden unpublished three play? Yes, the hidden unpublished three play, uh, where I was a thorn in everyone's side because I, I just, I couldn't handle couldn't myself. Couldn't cope. Yeah. yeah, I, I got, we got into the science stuff, and I just quite a lost journey, my mind. An odyssey of sorts. Yes, it was. It was very odd. We needed to play some more Life Goes On at that point. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and make yeah. sure that we could impale Sir Dies a Lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, we turned the, the Odyssey into an oddity. We did. I think. But it's a, it's a cool game. It's just a... You've got, you've got to be ready to it, get yeah. into learning mode. It's just right? meant for children who are way smarter than we are. <laughs> okay. So we would have failed yeah, that Jeff we're... Foxworthy, are you smarter than a fifth grader? The answer is no. No, no. and I have no interest in being that smart. <laughs> um, you don't need to be smart. You just need the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and the calculator. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I think I've mentioned this before. My dear math teacher from high school made a very big point of saying it's not like you're going to be carrying a calculator around in your pocket all the time are you sure well guess what (laughs) i'm carrying a calculator around in my pocket all All the the time time. (laughs) and honestly if i needed to do really really complex physics i could probably do it on that too (laughs) 
try to not awesome. remind him of that every year at tax time, yeah. but you know. <laughs> well, the thing that makes it so great is that everything on the internet is true. It is. So if you ever need to find anything out, boom, Vetted. Wikipedia. Yep, absolutely, there it is. totally. Everything you need to peer know. Peer verified. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Sweet. Yep. You know Problem that if you solved. found it on Wikipedia, it's it's like good as gold. Uh, it's practically the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> practically. 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 Um, I, anything else we want to say about this topic? Well, I guess <laughs> mm, we've gone through things that you want to give up. <laughs> Tries mm, to recover. To uh, <clears throat> I feel as if we've exhausted this topic, gentlemen. I don't know I if we've exhausted it. We just Mr. haven't Kelly. really stuck to it. Can, yeah. <laughs> can you finish the game without using shouts? <clears throat> oh, Well, it depends on what you mean by finish. Well, I know that the game isn't ever finished, but... If you were to some, follow the quest lines, some quests are more difficult, or would be more difficult than others. Because uh, because what what if you yeah, had, I don't know. what if you had just been right. fooling yourself, or everybody in Skyrim was just trying to play along and say, "Look, he'll go away if we tell him that he's the Dragonborn," uh -huh. but you never really get the shouts, right? I mean, yeah, you can play. I mean, you can play a long ways, pretty deep into the game without ever instantiating yeah. or instantiating the, the dragonborn shout. quests and the shouts and yeah. you just have to make sure you don't go up to the top I mean of the obviously you would never be able to complete the Alduin quest line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got you using shouts right away. Yeah. I mean but so you got to avoid that stuff. Just about many many of the others certainly the the side quests. Yeah, I mean I I think I've gotten up to well past 40th level without kicking any of the dragonborn really? stuff wow. off. Yeah. I was so. just—I mean, because it seems to me that the point of now, playing would be that you'd want you want to be the Dragonborn, but you know, right? Well, now you're in, sort um, of last in your Dragonborn class, and we were just sort of allowing you to continue on grade <laughs> you're to grade. Last in you know? <laughs> so I am now, the machine. If you, <laughs> if you use or are able to use the Skyrim Unbound mod, uh, which is an alternate <clears> start <throat> mod. You can specifically choose not to be the Dragonborn. Oh, um, really? There are a couple options in there regarding the shouts where, you know, I'm not the Dragonborn, but I can still learn them, or mm -hmm. I can't, um, that kind of thing. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah, there are many ways in which that is... I haven't that explored is all of those different options, ...a but really good thing, because if you're using alternate start, of course, the only way you can avoid it is you just kind of have to fucking, you know, stay away from Helgen. Avoid Helgen like the plague, mm -hmm. right? right? Right. Which, I don't like the idea that there's an entire region that you just have to kind of stay away from in order right. to keep from kicking that stuff off. Right. And I find myself, you know, like getting really annoyed a <laughs> lot of times that when when you go into Dragon's Reach and you just want to use the Enchanter's Table and then oh god and that and then that you know, what is the meaning of this? You every, what are name? you doing here? <laughs> Nothing. Just leave me alone. I want to use the Enchanter's Table. Yeah, every up some hot dogs. Yeah. And it's the only Enchanter's Table in that city. Oh you know, really? That's stupid. I mean, at least you can go make potions at um, what's her name's. Yeah, I know. Place, what you're but about that yeah, there's, shyster. There's, <laughs> There's Arcadia's no enchanters. Cauldron. Yeah, that's it. There's no yeah. enchanters table anywhere though. Hmm. Boy, you look like you have a case of rock joint. Yeah, she <laughs> is, man. She's a hard sell let, with Let that. me sell you something for that. <laughs> yeah, disease honest. you don't have. Honest. Yeah. What a jerk. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> Anywho. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for answering that question. Yeah, well, you know. That's what we do here. We we, we answer questions <laughs> promptly and in detail. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. at all. I don't think we could. I don't think we could ask questions about what would happen if Fleet had to give something up. Ah, uh, so yeah. We may soul. have to address that over the next twenty or so episodes. Well, in the next episode, we are going to we are going to see Fleet um, struggling with some psychological problems that mm. he has, confessing some some fears that he has and stuff like that, which will be kind of interesting i think um and you know uh I, I guess this relates a little bit to what terry had brought up earlier about holding off on certain quests and stuff like that mm -hmm. to, to to try and do things in a progression that makes sense you're in effect sacrificing power for story mm -hmm. right and i know in terry's case she's she's doing a story on on twitch 
you know she's got people who are interested in watching her story so she's feeding the audience in the same way that maybe we would right if if we're you know doing what we're doing right. but people are doing this all the time in their own heads in their game too you know they don't you don't have to be making a story for youtube you're you're doing this in your head right and you're saying well it makes sense logically that i would pursue this thing first or that thing first or maybe I've got this idea in my head, like the the first time I played through Sagramore, the, this whole Mortal Blade concept, I was just thinking about what is a cool progression for a character who's coming of age as like a warrior, right? Mm -hmm. He gets, you know, thrown into the Civil War and he becomes this war veteran, you know, and all this kind of stuff. He has all these experiences, right? And then he moves beyond that to the next echelon of of being a warrior, which might be the companions, right? And you're doing things in kind of a progression as opposed to just, you know, willy-nilly right. going around doing things. You're seeing a quest through as a precursor to another because in your mind, it makes sense from a story perspective, mm -hmm. right? So that's pretty cool. I like it very much. I think it was a good question. It it was excellent comment. Inga's not giving up the moon trigger anytime soon. No? No. It's good stuff. Yeah, well, she hasn't found anybody who wants to buy it, so she just keeps it for herself. You can put it on anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like Vegemite, mate. <laughs> Sprinkle it on your cereal in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I think she'd do that if she could. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you could, if you could give up eating meat and just go to uh -huh. scuba and moon trigger, you'd, you'd be <laughs> fine. <here. laughs> She's got a problem. I got she a leg of roast goat, and I'm rolling it moon sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, it, it's kind of like her jerk seasoning, right? She just rubs it into the meat and then roasts it over the fire, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the all-purpose seasoning. That dry delicious. rub's delicious. What's in that? <laughs> I'd like a lot more of that. Can I have more of that, please, right now? <laughs> Moon sugar time. Can't talk coming down. It's such um, a scarce ingredient, too. I mean, you're going to find a lot. You can find a fair amount of skooma laying around, but mm. you don't find a lot of moon, moon sugar. sugar. No, that's no. true. So, you you know, you kind of have to. You can to... buy it from the cats every now and again, but, but not. But maybe Inga, Inga isn't from Skyrim. So the thing <laughs> is, is that, you know, she, she grew up going to school uh -huh. trying to be the opposite of of her big muscular yep. brother who decided that right. running around nude in Skyrim was the right thing. So she thought <laughs> when she'd come into Skyrim God, looking for her brother. that is a messed up family. It really is. <laughs> it's a messed up know? family. <laughs> well, he's like frat boy gone wrong, yeah. I suppose. So. I, I think you should do, I think you should do like a whole uh, before the siblings kind of a thing. You oh, know, yeah. I, I would love to see like a, a vision of what their father was like, you know, like. I'll have to do that. Yeah. That yeah. boy's going to be somebody someday. I can tell. <laughs> I can feel it. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him run around his diaper. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's outside. He doesn't even need any clothes on. Man, he's a hairy bastard, isn't something, he? <laughs> something's wrong with that four-year-old with that much hair. <laughs> Damn. Maybe we should let her back inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, honey, did we get a new dog? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's Einer. It's Einer. Okay, let him outside. He's got to go poo. <laughs> Look at him squatting in the yard. Oh, oh, that's my boy. That would be a good story. <laughs> that would be so At great. some point, several years down the road, you'll have to teach yeah. me how to make a follower so that they can meet each other. That would be amazing. <laughs> What's up, bro? Dude, put a shirt on. Just chilling. <laughs> Just chilling. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Naked Nord. Just chilling. Just chilling. <laughs> I've, yeah. got, I've got my Stax shirt on today. Uh-huh. He does. So. Yar. He's yarring all over the place in here. Yarp. Yar Actually, there's, there's something just, you know, slightly fun about wearing a Character Crusade shirt underneath your regular work attire. Because, uh. you know, hiding just behind... That <clears throat> thin corporate veneer. And then at any moment, yes, you can yar. do like a Superman. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yar! yar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed Matt has been just, he's had one eye squinted closed all day? <laughs> What's with that noise he's making? <laughs> yar. Yar. I love it. <laughs> I'm just always worried that I'll be at work and you know something mm -hmm. will happen and I'll have to take my shirt off and they'll just see the naked Nord shirt, like in the office. You know, honestly, I'd be more concerned if you were at work and you had a reason that to you take needed your to shirt take your shirt off. <laughs> but but it, what, if you spilled something on your shirt or 
Say, Matt, we're going to need you to uh, take your shirt off. <laughs> S- sitting in his cube. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say I'm sorry, but watch this. <laughs> uh, typing so fast and working up a sweat. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be crazy. Uh, we got to make a video now. Uh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> too many fun things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have exhausted this topic, obviously. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, but what we're going to do is take a little break right now. We're going to come back with some sticks. <laughs> I'm just going to get back into too much time on my hands. but I know, right? Okay. Uh, hey, so, it's been fun seeing y'all. Uh-huh. y'all. So for the next little bit, you'll y'all. only see the back of my head. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Well, you can see this kind of the side of his head. Probably the side. Part of it's going. Unless be... you do the drone flyover, like you did with. Joe. Yeah, we'll we'll do some drone flyovers so you can get a full appreciation for it's what's nice, going on it's up like, there. It's like Airwolf <laughs> with the or uh, <laughs> Blue Thunder was the one that you could go into silent mode, right? Blue Thunder. I, I think Blue know. Thunder, think... you could go into silent mode. Well, I don't holy know that. shit. You're not thinking Blue Steel, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> don't you remember the other helicopter movie, Blue Thunder? Come on. Come I on. just keep thinking, what's the, what's the Clint Eastwood mo- one? Firefox? Firefox. Or yeah. fire? Oh, Foxfire. Foxfire. Oh, yeah. It's not about browsers. <laughs> totally. It's totally not a browser <laughs> that movie. That would have been a totally different movie. Yeah, that was uh-huh. that was Swordfish. I mean, come on. It was totally a movie about typing, the entire thing. <laughs> Hugh, Jackman. Type. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman types for two hours. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in five minutes. Bye-bye. Bye.